the ripe old age and turning over in bed and passing away in their sleep without a gigantic mess. I mean, uh, it's just not the way it works. And it's a, it's a, it's a kind of sad. Nobody wants to think about it. It's depressing. We want to look at fools on television marching around with, with bling in their teeth, acting like they're God Almighty. That's what we want to do. We want to look at arrogant fools on television who act like they're not part of the human condition. That, that helps us escape from the human condition. Loudmouths, show-offs, exhibitionists, uneducated adults. That's, uh, that's American society. So, but uh, there are other ways. I mean, you, know, you don't have to be guilty over it. I don't know what my family will do with me eventually. They say, you know, for, you know, you don't really know what's going to happen. I remember how many times I've joked on this show over the years that you may think you're going to live. To, it used to be my favorite little shtick every once, every few months, that you all think you're going to live to a ripe old age. And, you know, it's not the way it works. I said, most of you will end up in a nursing home completely incapacitated, staring at a curtain in the corner of a room. Uh, with an attendee beating you about the head and neck to not leave any marks, robbing you of any small change your, your children leave you. It's not so cynical, actually. It's what happens, unfortunately. But the thing is, who really knows? You have to write it up yourself uh, if you want something done for yourself when you're incapacitated because people don't know what to do uh, once you're sick. You can't even talk. So, you know, you have to pass. They write those things out. I know most people are young. They don't want to think about it. No one has to put their mind into that state of mind. But uh, it's part of our life today, you know. With the uh, socialized medicine that we now have in this country, and we've had long before Obama came along, the care is awesome, by the way. America has amazing facilities. And the, the amount of money being stolen in the medical profession is beyond comprehension. There's a scandal came out this morning that I've known about for years from a certain doctor in San Francisco who told me the, he wouldn't say who, and he said never mention on the radio, he's afraid for his life. Let us say a certain immigrant population came in here 15 years ago and they got into the ambulance business. He said it's the biggest thievery he's ever seen in his life. He said, I can't say a word. He said, they, they fake ambulance rides, they triple bill, they take people on 100 mile rides that are really a mile long and the government pays like idiots. I said, that sounds about like the homeland they left behind, that they sacked and burned to the ground. Well, now they're here for a new picking. So it came out today, a hundred, tens of billions of dollars stolen by ambulance companies. And Medicare doesn't know how to control it, you hear? That's your government at work. Now, that does nothing to do with related to what we're talking about, of course. But you can imagine if the ambulance companies are thieves, what's going on in the nursing homes? Wow, what a mess. The whole thing is a mess. How could one man straighten this out? You know, you often you ask yourself, can one person come along who's going to fix all of this? How much fixing can one person do in a country that's, that's this wrecked? Most people can't fix a company, let alone a nation. Go, go try to fix a company that's not working. And then now try to apply it to a nation that has a million, 10 million moving parts. He can't apply himself to the new leader to every broken pothole, can he? No. So, see, my view of it is a little different, is that if we had, and if we have a legitimate leader who's not corrupt, who's a real leader, and who's honest and moral and inspirational, things fix themselves up from the top down. But when you have someone as incompetent and as corrupt as Obama, everything breaks down from the, from the top to the bottom. There's an old saying that, when a, that a fish rots from the head down. And this country is rotting down to the local level. You go to little towns in Marin County, the streets are broken. They, they're taking in hundreds of millions of dollars a year in property taxes, robbing the money for pensions, and they won't fill a pothole. Go look at Larkspur, California. Take a ride through Larkspur, California, and ask yourself where all the money went, that these gangsters won't fix a street. Ask yourself where the previous uh, directors of this town are living. What state they ran to after they robbed the town blank. Public works, you name it, won't pave a pothole. Robbing the money stuffing their own, feathering their own nests, and I'm not the only one who sees it. This is an example of a nation that's breaking down from the top to the bottom. Believe me, it started before Obama was president. So how do you fix a thing like that? I don't have a direct answer. I don't have a direct answer. I know that each of us has to live our own life the best way we can and try to be as good as we can, and that's the end of it. You're not going to fix it all. How can one person come along who's going to fix potholes in your town and then save the U.S. military from the decimation it's been subjected to by Barack Obama. I would start with national security and worry about the rest later. 
the first thing a new leader has to do is is resuscitate the U.S. military, fire all of the new people that Obama put in, virtually every last one of them as a political appointee, along the lines of the KGB appointees in the ex-Soviet Union, and get rid of the PC appointees, throw them out of the military, demote them, and do it by executive order. And then go back and beg all of the officers that Obama purged out of the military and beg them to come back with a huge bonus. And then take ISIS off the planet. Take ISIS off the planet, then rebuild the military, division by division, group by group, department by department. The weapon systems are run down. The morale is at an all-time low, all because Obama has put KGB agents, which you call PC agents, into every, every uh, aspect of our military. You can't fix the potholes. You've got to fix the military first. And then work your way back from there. Believe me, Obamacare wouldn't be the number one thing on my list. The number one thing on my list, if I were in charge, would be the U.S. military. For without national defense, we're nothing. Which is why we become laughed at around the world. Which is why Russia, China, and Iran have now joined together to do what Obama never, ever wanted to do, which is to snuff ISIS. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, yesterday was the big day at the UN. Everyone gave their speech, and Obama came up holding the short straw because everyone sees that he has no... No knowledge of international affairs, a complete loser, made a mistake at every front. And Hillary Clinton, by the way, is the real goat here. I mean, she created, never forget this, she won't debate anyone because everyone knows she's hiding. And forget the, the emails for a minute. She has no qualifications to be president based upon her years as Secretary of State. She owns the whole idea of the Arab Spring, which has been an utter disaster. She destroyed the Middle East. The Syrian refugee crisis is a direct result of Hillary Clinton's Arab Spring. And of course, I don't expect the woodpeckers in the media to even bring that up. They're not that clever. That's why they're uh, talking heads on the media. They look good in a suit and tie. And yesterday, Putin had a talk uh, with Obama. And like, we're really going to get the truth. According to John Kerry, they got along just great. And they both agreed ISIS must be dealt with. Yeah, that's really what happened. And now Kerry comes out and repeats the big lie. And he said... Yes, Assad has to go. Has to go. That's the number one thing is Assad has to go. Kerry the genius said that the violence in Syria ends once Assad steps aside, said Kerry. He said the Russians need to understand you cannot have peace unless you have Sunni buy-in. You hear this? The kind of phrases this moron uses? Sunni buy-in. Now, another phrase. The girls cooked up for him, the sorority. Sunni buy-in. Because Assad is not a Sunni, he's a type of a Shia Muslim, an Alawite, he has to go. You hear this? You talk about religious persecution, so he has to go because he's not a Sunni? This is John Kerry for you. Well, I'll remind you, Mr. Kerry, of another mistake you made. You're well known for your mistakes. You made an idiot statement. You said violence in Syria ends once Assad steps aside. Excuse me, idiot. Did all the violence end in Libya and Egypt once Obama forced Gaddafi and Mubarak? Uh, out I mean please do you understand what the man is saying the Obama administration has been lying and messing up our foreign policy foreign policy for seven straight years they are totally lost on foreign policy they are misadvised on foreign policy they doubled down on their mistakes they're very much like the French generals in World War One that no matter what they did wrong they kept doing it and they sacrificed Hundreds of thousands and then millions of men to their stupidity. It's the same with these idiots. And there's an answer for it. There's an answer for everything. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. John Kerry and Barack Obama live in their own world. They are not subject to any input whatsoever. And that's how great nations fail. They're too insular. There's no vo lo loyal opposition. There's no opposition whatsoever. John Boehner is the opposition. That eloquent uh, drunk is going to be the opposition. He's given a speech recently that makes sense on foreign policy or on anything other than what type of uh, Johnny Walker he'd like put into his condominium in Jacksonville. No, I just gave an eloquent speech. 
It's time John Kerry stepped aside, and it's time Obama stepped aside, but it's not going to happen because power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, which is why we have government zero. Government zero explains it all. A government not of the people, by the people, and for the people. A government where there are no borders, no language, and no culture. A government of the government, by the government, and for the government, which is exactly what you have now. Government zero. More government and less representation. No one said it better than I. Now, we've covered an awful lot of material today, mainly lifestyle. We've talked about depression. We've talked about God. We've talked about love. We've talked about the biggest mistakes you may have made in your life. And we've also talked a little bit about the news. Tomorrow, of course, is Wednesday. It's another day. And I may wake up on the other side of the bed and want to do only politics. Maybe I won't watch a history of World War I and the last days of Hitler. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Thanks for listening.